Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's episode 456 for February 10th, 2015. I'm Mike Sork here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, and this is the show where we talk about the big time professional wrestling for the week. Um, with me uh, this this week, uh, no no LB. LB is uh, off uh, uh, hunting and skinning pigeons alive, according to this note here. We'll see what that's going on about. Of course, you know I have a fancy tie on if you're on video because uh, Sugartron Media is incorporated. Yay! As of today, Woo-hoo! got the big binder and a bunch of. Does paperwork that mean we get paid? Stand. No, not yet, not yet. I have shares. Fuck. I can maybe give you shares of the company. I don't know. I have to talk to my uh, my uh, my 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 representative that understands these things. Uh, but Did you guys, talk to the financial panther? Would, I don't. Uh, do you know the name of a good one? Financial panther. Yes. Uh, Homer Simpson's the one he used. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, give me the contact here after the show. But with us, you heard that voice. He's out in Johnstown, PA. It's Bobby F. J. Town. This part where Hi, saying- everybody. Um, I, I, hate, I regret to announce that Lunchbox has been suspended for six months without pay from the show for lying about uh, his involvement in hobo activities in Pittsburgh. Also with us from Poughkeepsie, New York, also a compatriot over on uh, on the uh, Rambling Movie Minute, it's uh, Mad Mike. How you doing, sir? Now, see, that's weird, because Bobby heard that he suspended six months. I heard that Lunchbox is winging his way to New York City to take over for Jon Stewart as also a Daily Show. Mm, okay, that could be that could be hot off the press as mainstream Matt on Twitter is saying DJ Lunchbox uh, serving... One week suspension for not being vulgar enough. I must have been handed down from the Patreons at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Riz, you're in the Pittsburgh area, and I'm sure you have an opinion about where uh, LB is. I do have an opinion, Sork. I don't want to give it to you right now because I have inside information. Uh, but I will be bribed if you, if you have money. Mm. Okay, okay. And also, back on the show, I think he hasn't been represented on here for, for too, too long, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Truly sorry about that. It's Wheels, Hot Wheels RWA on the Twitters uh, joining us. Uh, uh, remember, oh, wait, Eamon. Eamon, Eamon, no, that's not right. That's not right. Aaron, Eamon, it all looks the same when I'm setting it up, unfortunately. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your names all look the same to me. Who is Wait, Aaron? wait, wait, wait. wait. We all look the same to you. No, just your names. Uh, I'm, I'm. Oh, okay. I'm naming. Oh, the names are all, the names are all white. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. To me. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm back, and well, I I have to something to admit. I may have kidnapped DJ LB and wanted to take his place. Is he in the trunk of your rascal? <laughs> Oh, Why are you looking at me like that, Sorg? You helped me. Listen All right, that th- this sounds like corroborating witnesses. This this doesn't. Sword, plead the fifth. Uh, that's just enough not- of that. I'll plead the uh, rest of the show for this one. You can join us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe on iTunes, Twitter. Not Twitter? Yeah, yeah Twitter's as well. Uh, on iTunes, on uh, uh, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, please subscribe, rate on iTunes. That's a big, big help to get the word out there. Um, also, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Uh, you can also drop us a line, 412-206-WMS0, or that email address at Good times. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We like to read them on the air and become part of the show in, in new and exciting ways that we're doing all the time. You can join us live in the chat room right there, right there, with these wonderful images these guys are putting up there, just like <laughs> Buddy Landell right there and uh, the Riz putting images in there. Hi, hi, Riz. Hi. How you doing? There you are. Um I don't know why oh, you're muted. I don't know what's going on there. 
Um, oh, I because I muted myself. Okay. <laughs> I thought my system just died. Uh, but you can join us at live.wrestlingmamshow.com. Every Tuesday night, we try, try to get start set up about uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time, uh, followed by the Indie Mayhem Show, uh, 11 p.m. or so Eastern time as well. Tonight, we have Colin Delaney. Oh, geez, Colin Delaney, the extremely cute wrestler, former ECW WWE star, and currently uh, just had a match with Tommy Dreamer in the Inter- International Wrestling Cartel. You can check that out over at PittsburghWrestling.com. Uh, so, and also, please support us. Uh, Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can become our boss for a penny. For a mere penny a One. show. That's you it. Can buy fish with that. But you get with, more things after after a dollar. You get you get stuff like WMS Gold. You get the uh, State of the Mayhem addresses that I do monthly. Let you know the inside info about what's going on with the show and some of the stuff we have upcoming and other other perks. There's and actually, if you want to get advertised on the show, that's one way you can do. It. We have some levels on there uh, where we can uh, have you you know in the show in some capacity across the network actually, and uh, even help you do a commercial uh, to a certain point. So go check that. out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and also including um you know our bosses uh, as of this week the wrestling revolution.com is supporting this show let's see applause for them thank you wrestling yeah. revolution yeah. go check them out also bo diggity that's good enough for bo diggity he's been supporting us these guys have been supporting us they won on patreon it's been tremendous um so please do that so let's get into it with our first topic of the day we got of course a big show coming up this week i'm not going to talk about raw we're not going to talk about raw raw was raw that's fine. We talked about it on a podcast last night called The Raw Wrap-Up. We'll talk about it a little more, uh, I'm sure, with the emails and everything later today. It'll come up in conversation. But today, I want to talk about what is important. What are you excited about in pro wrestling right now? And right now, I think everybody in this in this, in this this chat, in this Google Hangout in the, on the show, is excited about WWE TakeOver, NXT TakeOver going on right now uh, on Wednesday. Uh, their latest live. They've been called a pay-per-view. This is interesting because like, Triple H and all the other guys mm-hmm. are calling them pay-per-views on the WWE Network. I thought we would just kind of call them something else, right? Um, but definitely, and, and actually tonight, tonight I actually want to give a shout out because I saw, let me see if I get the image up here too, um, but friend of the show, Corey Graves, the fir- the former uh, Sterling, uh, uh, SJK Sterling James Keenan, uh, is actually hosting a, <laughs> if I can get the image, here he is, uh, a, a, a pre-show. What? Oh, that's the wrong one. Still, it's still on the there you go, Riz. There you go, Riz. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Uh, uh, is, is, it, is hosting a preview show uh, for NXT. Or is it NXT a rival? NXT rivals? Like what? I, NXT what? rival. NXT rival. Like take over learned, rival. I learned that they just use the arrival logo and just cover the NXT. Well, if you, they are with the yeah. I mean, they basically stamped the NXT logo on Arrival and covered it so it's Rival. So it's like you know, it was the listen, Arrival. Listen, listen, okay, no wait, okay. Now, NXT, I love what you're doing. I love what's happening. Triple H is your pet project, and, and and I love that you're doing this. Uh, you're just a guy on a podcast that runs a small promotion in Florida. Um, I, I mean, but 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 the, whoever is designing your logos, just stop it. Stop it! You're confusing me. You know, like our what was it? Our our, uh, our evolution. Our evolution last month. It's. Oh. I know you're 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 kind of broadcasting to a smarter wrestling crowd, but but you got me. I have no idea what's going well, on down there. Sorg NXT Takeover is like WWE in your house, and then they have all the <laughs> subtitles. Okay, okay, uh, you, okay. I understand that now. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, wow. Uh, but oh, and also um. Corey Graves was also on the Marvel podcast this week. Really? Yes. I have yet to listen to it. I'm going. I don't listen to the Marvel podcast normally, but I'm going to listen to it because I'm curious. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's confusing to me. And I'm wearing a tie, so that's important. <laughs> Anyways. It's not, it's not confusing to Amen, so it's not confusing. Well, he's. He's, well, Eamon's in college, and he's learning stuff. That's true. I went to art school. <laughs> Lots of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyways, going to the show, when I, it's amazing. Okay. Um, this is, 
you know, if you're always like, oh, if you come from the Indies, you come in here and you have to adapt. Look how long it took guys like Seth Rollins, like uh, Dean Ambrose, right? Uh, guys like Dan O'Brien took so long to come up through the system, right? Um, then we have guys like Kevin Owens, the former Kevin Steen, um, that, you know, even in this system, I mean, we know guys that have been signed for a year or more at this point that we haven't seen on TV in any significant role. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. but then you have somebody, I wasn't going to name any names. I wasn't going to name any names. Giving examples. Okay. All right, but you have guys that have, and granted, the guys that like like Shiloh, like they're like they're not a steam. They're not a guy that went to Ring of Honor and did all this stuff or New Japan and have a name value and have a proven track record to that point. Um, I think career wise, Shiloh's. I mean, he what was he like four or five years maybe in so far, mm-hmm. um, and, and not and definitely not. On the level. I mean, he's he's doing great stuff in Pittsburgh, but not like on a Ring of Honor New Japan level, of course. Um, so, so there's a little more to grow, I think. Um, but you get guys like Kevin Steen, like Finn Balor, the former Prince Devitt, um, and they're getting thrown directly into the fray here in very kind of high profile situations, right? First showing, we get Kevin Steen inserted into the title picture. Well, I think it also has to do with what kind of in ring style you bring because. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys like Finn Balor, guys like Sami Zayn, uh, Neville, and Atami, they work a very indie style. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot, of, a lot of high spots, a lot of flips and stuff like that. Kevin Steen kind of works like a WWE big guy. Like, I mean, he'll have the high spots in here and there, but I don't think there's as much um, adapting of his skill set that he has to do compared to some of the other guys because and, I was listening to uh, the Jericho podcast with Sammy Zayn and Adrian Neville. And even Sammy was talking about so much stuff that he had to change about what he was doing, like playing up to the cameras and knowing where the cameras were and stuff like that. And I think Steen already did a lot of that. I was, ju- I was just going to say that Mike did like going back to when I was watching the uh, triple H stone cold, podcast that's basically what he said are coming from the indies and have to switch over to the wwe style even before they even make it up to the main roster they have to learn the wwe style not the indie style because not a lot of guys know how to work like you said the camera and certain things and he made a point of mentioning certain not mentioning by name, but some people that, hey, uh, they didn't work well with our style. And mm-hmm. I mean, I'll say it myself. He meant Cassius Ono, mm-hmm. aka Chris oh, cer- Hero. Certainly, certainly. I knew exactly who he meant when he said that. I went, I knew exactly you were talking about that guy was not cooperative of wanting to work a new style mm-hmm. that he wasn't used to. But you like you said, you got your Kevin Owens who's used to it and Sammy and all them that can go. And that's why they're being rewarded. And and, and I've I've been I've been backstage at, at some of the indie shows where there are guys that have been definitely definitely getting a look you know again you know guys that we've had on the show uh, names that if you watch any of the indies you know these names you know I mean, you know some of them Ring of Honor guys too. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they've had a look by WWE and hearing them bitching, it's like, what do these old guys know about this, this, and this, you know, it's like, well, you know, the old guys have been there. The old guys know what it takes to be on TV and deal with what you have to deal with to be a WWE mm-hmm. guy. Um, you know, and, and, and you're seeing the guys that are like, like when they had that picture of Triple H with, uh, uh, Baylor, uh, uh Steen and, and who was it? Was it a Hitami? Yeah, it was a Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like they're like that was a big like kind of like yeah no you're gonna see these guys very soon you know I, I don't think we expected how soon we were gonna see those guys um, that was really surprising but uh, we do and and it's it's great stuff and I think you're gonna see um, you know this is a part of NXT becoming its own brand and bringing that style we're seeing more and more 
uh, live shows across uh, Cleveland just announced a show, a smaller show. They're doing it at the Agora Ballroom, which is famously, I know ICP shows have been there. Like it's, it's typically a venue. But there's been wrestling, too. JCW's right now there, too. But, I mean, these are indie venues. This is like this interesting experimental thing. Like when they had ECW re- relaunched, they did smaller venues. They did the Irish Center here in, in town. They did, did like some of the old smaller places. Didn't they did Rush River Ice Gardens one time wheels, which is, again, mm-hmm. a smaller yeah. place. Like, I do remember that, yeah. Right, I think they probably filled it a little better than Ring of Honor did, um, but uh, it, you know, it it, it it was like let's do these smaller scale shows. This is not the bigger brand, you know, and see what happens. And and Columbus uh, sold out like nothing. So, so I'm, I think you're going to see really, that more. I'm really, really hoping they bring NXT to Mid Hudson Civic Center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like start hitting because, those. I mean, they used to run Poughkeepsie all the time. Like, right, right. Now, oh, is God, it that I would love. Is Let's it see. that they? Triple H, I know you're listening. <laughs> I will. I will get on the horn to everyone I know and sell the place out. I guarantee it. Mm-hmm. I just. I just hope if they come to Johnstown, they don't lose the ring again. <laughs> and that could be a thing. Like they could. They could run a lot of those smaller venues like that. That they're already doing house shows at. Uh, maybe maybe even take the show on the road, but you know, probably more they want to stick with full sale because he's talking about how they're even training like the cameraman. Which really is uh, now that I will probably never be a cameraman for WWE because they have their own kind of track for that. Um, but you know, it, it's uh, you know it, they could expand that out. Maybe have like one WWE guy, like reg- main roster guy, on every show to like bring a little bit of name value, um, just in case. What? What's up? That's what they did in the beginning. That's right. what they did in the beginning. Right. You had guys like Seamus and even this is going to be well the great colleague going over no, there. No, and Dolph to, and RVD. They, and they and Dolph. And, yeah, they had all these guys to go out there and promote NXT. Right. And that's what they did. They promoted the brand. And they made the mm-hmm. promotion bigger because there's more eyeballs mm-hmm. on the WWE network, which then made more people realize, holy shit, there's a lot of wrestling going on here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to watch this now. And now, and then after that little tryout period, they took away the, the big stars and let them work themselves. Right, right. And it, it's working. And they're, they're making I think it. it also, I think they're making a lot of money off the merch, too. Uh, I'm probably not I mean, a lot. Like, they're not making they're John Cena level. got the belts. Yeah, the belts and everything. I mean, it's another thing. It's another brand. It's a it's a very dedicated brand. You know, they talk about WWE Network. Is that hard core following? That's why we are going nuts for that stuff. Um, you know, it, it's it's. It, well, I mean, pretty much everyone on the main uh, roster of NXT, like the high card, the people you expect, they all have merch now. Mm-hmm. Like Kevin Owens has merch. Sami Zayn has two shirts. Mm-hmm. That, Balor has shirts. Uh, mm-hmm. Bailey just came out with a shirt. Sasha has a shirt. Charlotte has a shirt. Their merchandise like, the is Vaude Vaude like trying them the out. The Vaude Villain shirt is one of the best shirts WWE's come out with in a very long time. Right, right. And they're getting but, to play a bit more. And, and we're this is the future, you know. This is where it, it, it can go from here. And it's very exciting to see. Any other thoughts? You know, of course, the big match is uh, uh, Zayn versus uh, Owens. I think if anybody's watched Ladder War, they know we're in for something special. Sork, yeah. what, what's your prediction? My prediction? Because we, we did predictions on the midweek war. Um, but I want, I want to hear predictions from Bobby Wheels and you. Okay. What we did on the midweek war was we did prediction for the world title match. Okay. The women's title match. Yeah. And an off-the-wall prediction for the rest of the show. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go down the line then. Um, I, think, uh, I think it's going to be... Um, I think it's not going to be a clean finish. I think it's going to be a uh, Kevin Owens is too brutal and the match stops after something ridiculous happens because it's a blood. I see everybody nodding out in the corner of my eye here. <laughs> um, I see it happening. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's this is this is match one. This is match one. This will be a series. This will be like the Zayn and uh, Neville series. Even though uh, I don't think they'll give a belt directly to Owens, but I don't think he'll get I think, it. I think uh, it's going to happen. I think he's going to win. I think it's going to happen. Uh, I think he's going to win. All right, win. this is my this is my prediction. Okay. Uh, <laughs> women's women's the four way, right? Um, I think yeah. Charlotte's definitely yeah, it is. Charlotte's dropping it, and uh, she's not getting pinned, so she still looks strong when she goes to the main roster. What? We're going to make him look good before we pop him up? Sure, why not? Um, make him look strong like Roman Reigns. Who gets it? Um, who gets it? I, I, I want to say Sasha. 
I would I would be surprised if it was anybody else, but I think Sasha is the one that makes sense. I don't like Sasha yet. Um, what? 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 I, 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 I agree Sasha. with Sora. What? No, I, I, I don't like Sora. Sasha. I'm not, I'm not yeah. sold on her yet. You just not... take that back. Yeah, I, 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 that, not... that's it, Riz. I, I, that's what I'm saying. Not that I... Oh, yeah. God, it's, it's not that she's not. I'm not saying she's not good. I'm not saying anything. I'm just like I'm not. I'm not bought into what she's doing yet. You know, I I'm I don't like the character. Not in a, in a uh, wow. I love to hate that character. It's like a no. I don't get it. You know, I just don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't get. Is she like I I I don't get it. And that's it. Maybe she's a great it. wrestler. She's a good wrestler. And she's probably a good human being, but I just don't get the character. Now, let's be honest. A- if you watch Total Divas, you know that none of these ladies are good human beings. Let's be honest. Um, oh, that's not true. That is not true. Paige, Paige is an angel. Paige. Paige is amazing. That's true. That's true. Well, Bailey. Bobby. Bailey just wants hugs. Oh, uh, you want an awful wall? Oh, what's your- you want an awful, awful wall? wall? I think we're going to get the debut of... That's not really off the wall, though. I think it's expected, though. Yeah. I think, I, yeah, you'll get the crow introduction. Uh, uh Solomon yes. Crow. Okay. I think you'll get I think I think Finally, it, yeah. I think he shows up. I think there will be spots, 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 you know, through the show, like the the, the glitching will get work worse. Uh he'll come out and uh feud with feud with feud with hmm. um Jeez, I don't know. Mojo Raleigh. Yeah, <laughs> Mojo Raleigh. I don't know. Maybe they'll give him somebody like Mojo Raleigh. Um, no, I think he'll. I think he'll end up. He needs to go against a baby face. So let's do. Is you know what? TJ a face? What? Is TJ Parker a face? No, no, absolutely TJ? not. No. Absolutely nice. not. Um, I want to say you give him Baron Corbin. No, no. that's my off the oh, wall. That's... that's my off the wall. What about you, okay. Riz? <laughs> what about you, Riz? Well, Riz already went. I already, oh. I already went. You oh, I'm sorry. What well, about uh, Bobby? What are we doing now? Um, predictions. World title. Off. World title, wins, women's title. Off the wall. Oh, uh, Kevin Owens is going to win the world title. Who wins the D, the women's match? Um, I'm going to say Bailey. And mm-hmm. what is your off the wall prediction? I think it's not really an off the wall prediction, but I think Marcus Louis is going to attack. Uh, 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 the gorgeous guy. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Tyler, Tyler, Breeze. Breeze. Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze. Son Breeze. of a bitch. How do you not know? I was know gonna Tyler say, Breeze. Bobby almost exactly <laughs> copied what I said on the midweek. Yeah, board. he he reversed his. He said Marcus Louis was going to interfere in the match, but only on the side. Of oh, okay, Tyler I think. Breeze. Yeah. No, no, I don't think on the side. I, I think he's after. Yeah. Him. Well, and no, we, my 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 fantasy booking for Marcus Louis. Is that he? He just wants to be pretty, so he goes to Tyler <laughs> Breeze for NXT Makeover. You do this to me. So wheels. 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 All righty. Who, who wins the world? I'm going to go with Sammy, but only because of I kind of agree with Sword with the whole brutality that it's going to continue. Oh. Well, we're getting a little caught up with this connection here. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, it broke. Solomon oh, Crow is here. Internet. <laughs> Damn you, Internet. Solomon Crow. Internet. He's here. He's here. Oh, no. There he is. He's back. back. You're back. Okay. Real quick before we lose you again. All right. All right. What I said was Sami Zayn wins via, like, what Sorg said, a stoppage or DQ or something like that. It continues to feud, and maybe possibly leading into a cage match. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that'd be the first uh, NXT cage match. Exactly. Do you think and they then, have a yellow cage? Dude, that would be oh. sick. <laughs> yes. Please. And I'm not talking like chain link, like the old school WWF. Oh, Blue. I don't think I don't think they'd go back to that because everyone I've heard in an interview said that. That thing was the most painful to take bumps off of. Mm-hmm. Oh, then that's perfect for Steen and <laughs> Zane. <laughs> yeah, they'll do it. They'll do it. They'll do it. Trust me, if, right. you, if you went up to Zane or Steen or, or, or Owens and goes, look, we're going to have you wrestle in the blue cage. 
<laughs> Tell me they wouldn't be excited be great. to wrestle in a blue ca- yeah, in the blue cage. Even the black bar one, right? I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say, if you're that worried about getting hurt, did we not remember to powerbomb on the edge of that ring to Zane? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not worried about that. So that blue cage is going to be nothing. <laughs> so, so on that note, guys, these these guys do a great podcast. The uh, the midweek war where they talk uh, NXT now SmackDown and Lucha That's Underground. Not how it goes, sort of. What's that? That's not how it goes. That's yeah, not. Those guys listen how to talk. Week Go check it out. YouTube.com under the wrap ups. Uh, under a uh, slash wrestling mayhem show under the wrap ups, of course, wrestling mayhem and there's feeds on uh, on iTunes and Stitcher and such as well. Or uh, just follow the wrestling mayhem show super feed, uh, just Google it, you'll find it on, on iTunes and Stitcher right there, or wrestling mayhem show.com. Um, so with that, let's go to uh, mention our, our wonderful, wonderful friends, um, us at pittsburghwrestling.com. <laughs> <laughs> Another spinoff here of Sorgatron Just Media. Back, if you like sword. pro wrestling, you are already listening to a conversation about NXT. Uh, find out so much more from uh, some local promotions here in Pittsburgh. AndyWrestling.us, PittsburghWrestling.com takes us right to takes you right to our store over there. Not that one. This one here. Hi chat room. Uh, hi chat room. Uh, stuff like uh, IWC Reloaded with uh, Tommy Dreamer versus uh, Colin Delaney. Dalton Castle, who just uh, premiered on, on on Ring of Honor. I still need to watch that. Friends of the show like Andrew Palace, RJ City. And also great stuff like January Jackpot from Vicious Outcast Wrestling uh, involving uh, Davey Richards. And this is actually going to be the prize for tonight's big question. So stay oh. tuned later in the show for that. Winner Takes All featuring Matt Hardy. Seasons Beatings uh, featuring uh, uh, the RWA's finest, Johnny Gargano, part, uh, part one, a coming of age, a best of from uh, from Prime Wrestling. Uh, of course, Montreal Theory, AJ Styles, the missing matches, finding Zach Gallon, so much more digital downloads, single matches for IWC, um, and, and and all kinds of cool stuff with with a lot of guys. We, we we have matches with a lot of guys that you guys know out there, especially ECW guys. Um, some of the guys currently in NXT and WWE. Uh, there's matches in there with Dean Ambrose. Um, there's well, at least one in there with Dean Ambrose under his uh, former name, which was that escapes me right now. Um, what? Moxley. 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 Thanks. Moxley. Thank you. Thank you. Um, John Moxley. Right. Um, John Moxley. And, and best of CM Punk's all kinds of fun stuff there. So go check it out. And Pittsburgh wrestling dot com. So uh, topic number two for today. Uh, we're uh, uh, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, where, do you, where do you want to start, Sork? Seth Rollins really made a dick of himself, didn't he? Oh, <laughs> Seth you, Rollins no, he exposed. The, no, you know what? He was the true wiener. That who? Ah, uh, <laughs> who has who has a story on Seth Rollins here? Man, he really cocked up. What? Okay, that's enough. That, that's yeah, enough. That's, 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 wow. that's, I got one. I got one. I got one. Oh, I got one. Okay. I got one. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, this is the part where uh, DJ Lunchbox throws himself <laughs> into the river. I, I'm sure he's um, not going right, to listen so, anyway. So. so Basically, uh, from what we've been able to gather, <laughs> the story, um, right before Raw, uh, a picture got tweeted from Seth Rollins' account Ooh, it's a lady. of a, <laughs> of a mm-hmm. developmental diva. Um, well, let's just say in all of her glory, and oh my, what glory it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and then immediately after that, Seth Rollins is is it fiance? Yeah, yeah. Uh, fiance tweeted a couple of, um, well, let's just say she told us who the new member of the Shield was, <laughs> and, and she showed a couple pictures of Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were qu- the, everything was quickly deleted, but of course uh, not because the internet and. You could just tell, like, when Seth Rollins came out for his match, that he was like, oh, God, what did I do? Oh, no. <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 the headline from Deadspin is, let's go look at Seth Rollins' dong. <laughs> 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 oh. oh, boy. We are um, five years old, everybody. Thought, oh, there you I go. Thought the Undertaker was, I thought The Undertaker was coming back because we had a couple dongs. 
Oh, <laughs> Bobby. So, no, so, so, what happens when you're not here? So we're saying, oh. we're saying, um, his the initial thing was was that his Twitter got hacked. Wait, what was the initial? His Twitter or Instagram or something got hacked. Yeah, something, his, his, the original Twitter. one was his Instagram got hacked. Oh, his Instagram. Hmm. And then it, it the the information came out that it was his fiance that kind of blew it. That kind of did it. So so more. they're saying, and they're saying that the uh, according to this article uh, over on uh, New York Daily News of all places, uh, saying that the, the, the pictures of uh, the model uh, uh, Zara Schreiber. Uh, oh, yeah, appeared go. on at least three of his social media accounts, um, and they were oh, not really? blurred, guys. In fact, like uh, I was yeah, they were to, definitely not blurred. I came mm-hmm. in late last Should we night. Be showing this sword. I, I, well, it's blurred. It's blurred. This one is blurred. I we're okay. Um, okay. But 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 the, the first thing I was greeted to was this picture, not blurred, in the middle of my Google Plus feed when I sat down about ten o'clock last night for the third hour of RAW. Um, I had it right in the Twitter feed. A bow, um, but uh, we, we had Jen Carlin sending us. So the is this a? Here. I mean, so so we're what, like the, this is an accidental post. Was this a hacking? Like what? No. Are we oh, clear? It wasn't accidental on the wife's part. No, the it was not. Part. The it, wife it was, was retaliatory, purposely. of course. Uh, um, yeah. a- Amon's asking in the chat room if anyone feels like this could affect his push or no. His... No. No. I don't think so. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. It was not his fault that the the photos got leaked. No, and unfortunately, the only, the, and only unfortunately way, the only way that it would be effective is if somewhere down the because John Cena cheated once, and he's still John Cena. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, but there was no like tangible evidence that was proven. It wasn't like you got a picture of John Cena in the back of a golf cart with Nikki Bell's legs in the air, you know, like nothing like that happened. Mm-hmm. That's just on total divas. And that's yeah. the thing. And, 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 and we know like, at least like newer stars are signing uh, uh, decency clauses that there are not nudes of them on, on the internet, stuff like that. Um, does Seth Rollins have something like that? You know, is there something that he is going to be penalized for this coming out? And then what, what's the scope of that? Is it because it's his fault? I mean, obviously he maybe didn't post it or whatnot, but you know, stuff happens. You know, and, and it'll be interesting to see how this is going. This is an HR nightmare for one thing. Um, mm. But <laughs> I he apologized. Eamon's saying, saying that the Twitter and Instagram at one point appeared on WWE.com social feed. Oh, oh wow, wow! That will be handled, and that is a conversation they're going to have. This is a teaching moment for us guys uh, for social media. First of all, uh, realize if you're doing pictures like this and stuff, uh, use Snapchat. Baby, I'm Sorgatron on there. Um, wait, wait, that didn't connect. Send right, actually, actually. No, yeah, don't, send Sorgatron don't, your pictures. Don't, don't. don't, don't, don't. <laughs> don't. A no. equals equals D. Oh jeez. If I see that light up once Snapchat uh, in the next ten minutes, I'm going to delete it from my phone. Just the whole app. <laughs> yeah. We're done with that experiment. Yes, um, yes. But no, I, and, and this can happen to a lot of people, and this does unfortunately happen to a lot of people. Um, uh, but otherwise, Seth Rollins, man, you shouldn't have been you shouldn't have been uh, working on that side piece, man. Uh, that, that's the other part. So his wife, fiance, 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 fiance. Okay. I'm sure I'm getting all the parts. There's a lot of moving parts here, and I just haven't had time to settle down and figure it out. Um, but uh, his fiance, not there, there was a there was a moving part. So. I don't think. Yeah, I I I, I think there will be discussion about how they handle things like this in the future. Um, I don't think initially, I, I, Mike, you. Son of a! <laughs> I do not want to open that. It's just an emoji penis sword. I don't know. Still, it's all it's, it's, that's, that's all right. At least it's... I don't have Google Glass anymore. Um, <laughs> um, but no, I mean this is going to happen. I mean, it, 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 we used to have rants on here all the time about uh, stupid people, or wrestlers doing stupid things on the internet. Uh, 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 close to you know, uh, uh, kind of related to this, there was some stuff going on. Uh, this just came up. Uh, I saw a little bit before we went to air. Here it was actually posted at uh, eight eight thirteen over at nodq.com. Darren Young is posting a bunch of tweets as well, saying stuff like, "I feel like no one has my back. It upsets me. The struggle is real. I'm human. Uh, my freedom of speech is gone, gone but not forgotten." Uh, you know, it, it's and this was uh, and this was after apparently deleting a tweet uh, uh, criticizing WWE's tour of Abu Dhabi, where homosexuality <laughs> is a crime. And posting another tweet saying that his freedom of speech is gone. 
Um, it, it, so, I mean, this is, hey, you guys gave, WWE, you guys um, 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 gave the tools to them. You, you mandated this, uh, more or less, saying, hey, you guys, mm-hmm. we want you people, you, you to interact with the fans. We want you guys to extend things on social media. Um, and I'm sure there were lessons about how you do, I hope there were lessons about how you do that, what say what you do and don't say i mean somebody like a darren young maybe he's drinking at a bar and this is coming out right uh um, well, matt hardy uh, was the first person that had issues with that with right the feet right right and issues i mean not like he was worked for a company that that really you know would have fired him or anything at that point uh, over it you know anybody like tna or is just happy to have him in general because he's a name right and he's coming to them mm-hmm. um but uh, you know this this is going to happen you enable these guys with these tools and you can't get i mean you can but you can't get that upset when they they use their freedom of speech like this you know or the weird weird crap that ryback does with his twitter twitter account <laughs> Well, know. Ryback's yeah. awesome with his Ryback's Twitter. Ryback's awesome. Okay. He, deletes, he deletes his tweets right afterwards. Ryback like Snapchat is my Twitter. favorite meathead in pro wrestling right now. I got to say that. And he's a better <laughs> worker than Goldberg. Said it. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting to see what's going on there. Um, I, it, it's interesting. Between that and then, of course, uh, China popped up on uh, Vince Russo's uh, podcast course, today, which I think I, I, I put the preview over in the Wrestling Mayhem Show group on Facebook, and I thought the most – uh, interesting thing that popped out is there. China is teaching English in Japan. What? Oh, God. Those poor Japanese people. Well, I mean, the, the conversation, again, I haven't watched the entire thing. I don't subscribe to Pyro and Bally, who's VIP service. They should uh, sponsor, give us a sponsorship uh, kickback for that, by the way. Um, I should I should call a guy. Uh, but anyways... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, you know, saying that the things that they're saying are the reason she can't get mainstream work in this country, and why she has to go to Japan and do something like that, um, which is really really interesting. Um, so, uh, what but, kind of mainstream work is China trying to get? I I remember seeing her on Third Rock from the Sun. She wasn't exactly very good. No, no, there's that too. But, I've seen her in another a few other things. She was not good either. <laughs> but uh, she was green, Riz. She was green. She was oh, green. She was oh. very Bobby. Bobby, no, but points. He's not, oh. he's not wrong. Anyways, wrong let us know what you think. You think Seth Rollins going to get punished? Oh, I got my own do joke. She's green. Is this going to do anything going oh into WrestleMania? I didn't mean that. Oh, Jesus. All right, all right. All right, guys, 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 guys. All right, in the meantime, let's give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, they're supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with good pizza right here. Um, in, 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 in right, right, right here, all right up in the road. They're over uh, on Broadway Avenue here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh and the Beachview area. And that's Seth Rollins exposed. Let's get rid of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was, we always like sh- we always shoot uh, sites on Broadway in, in, in between the most interesting of topics on this show apparently. Uh, oh, but they're there they're down at Carnegie Main Street. We Carnegie. Could always get. Street, Carnegie. Oh, 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 we go Main Street, Carnegie, PA. Uh, go check them out if you're in the area. Uh, great stuff from scratch, uh, made with love, man. No, they're obsessed with abnormally obsessed with good pizza. Is their tagline. Uh, they get they get all, everything made from scratch. This isn't a frozen shell that they're putting in there, like like a Pizza Hut or something like that. Um, sandwiches, all that kind of stuff. Um, go check them out and tell them. Even just hit them up on their Facebook uh, for Slice on Broadway or PGH underscore Slice on Twitter and let them know Wrestling Mayhem Show sent you. Do it right now. Are you listening live? Are you listening later? Go to our Twitter your Twitter piece and uh, hit up at PGH underscore Slice. Be like, hey man, just heard about you on the Mayhem Show. Yum. Do that right now if you got the opportunity. If, if I, Sorg, if I do that, will they send me pizza to New York? I don't know. Ask them. Will they give, Ask them. Will they give my phone number out to people? Because that would be weird. That, why would they do that? <laughs> hey, Sorg, uh, I, bet you, I bet you if Seth Rollins called them, he'd want sausage on his pizza. But no, oh, yeah, on that note, we're going to take a quick break. and We'll be right back with the big question, but without DJ Lunchbox. How can this go? How? Hmm. Mm. This is Kevin Eastman, co-creator of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show! We're back. It is a Wrestling Mayhem Show, and it's time for that big question. Now, since we don't have a DJ Lunchbox who started the big question, we got one by one Matt Mike uh, that we uh, came up with after the uh, Raw wrap-up, actually, last night. Uh, Mike, what is this week's big question? This week's big question... Um... 
It came up while we were talk while we were talking in the wrap up. And uh, if you could bring in anybody to run WWE, who would it be, and why? Do you want me to go first, Sorg? Uh, no, you you get the pick. Oh, oh, no, no, oh, no, I, oh, I get to do this. Um, I, wait, 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 I forgot how this works. I, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Who you are you? You're not DJ Lunchbox. Uh, Riss. No, oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> why are you picking yes. me first, Sorg? Uh, Bobby. I, I got one. Um, I want Shane McMahon to come back and run the company. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I like that. I miss Shane with like every fiber of my being. Mm-hmm. I was having a good um, I miss him jumping across the ring and I think he just would be something fresh that you know I even if you insert him as like a storyline wise to combat Triple H and Stephanie or if he just takes over the company like himself mm-hmm. I mean Vince is out of touch as we know um, what better way to push him out of the way than Shane just dad get out of the way are we talking storyline or we're we talking takeover takeover I, both both like, but, but but mike the question is like who who replaces vince right yeah basically yeah, okay. yeah. like we're, I, we're talking I, 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 for reals but you know i'm with you i actually had a good i mean uh, creatively essentially yeah. and i had a good conversation like, like, with, just says, there's one guy who gets the final say so that's right vince. right like who, who, who's the next guy who'll be your kind of surprise and when, and actually i'm with you bobby on at least storyline wise bringing shane back just for a little bit mm-hmm. i had a good conversation with some All of the right. guys out at uh, some of our uh, friends of the show out of uh, vicious outcast wrestling saturday night and we're like just bring him back just to just to do the dance you know <laughs> just come out yeah. you know screw over uh, trips and stuff and uh, just do the dance but that's not oh, my that's yeah. not my final answer or anything though. that's one of okay. his requirements to see a new ceo exactly i think exactly. we just the dance at <laughs> every board meeting wheels <laughs> oh we lost the oh. oh no oh no oh um, no i got one okay go ahead Riz. uh i stick i'm going to stick with the mcmahon family and say stephanie okay you think Stephanie because becomes? She has the, she has the wrestling knowledge that, a her dad, has, and b, her husband has. Mm-hmm. But now she also has the business aspect that you know Linda and even to a certain certain extent Vince had. Mm-hmm. So that that can mesh, and she can probably get a little you know. Probably something in her ear about, like maybe step, maybe Triple H can talk to her about doing something with somebody else. Uh, but I think having just a McMahon running it for the business sense is a smart move. Uh, and the takeover day-to-day operations. I don't, I don't feel like Triple H or Hunter is going to be bad but i don't think he's going to be the level of a mcmahon Mm -hmm. because they've built this company Mm -hmm. i don't think they want to lose it right right um uh mike do you have you you got an answer to your own question here i i I do my answer is paul Heyman. oh wow paul Heyman, because paul Heyman, if he was in charge of wwe he would have enough Competent, capable guys around him to handle the financial aspect of it. And Heyman could just be head of creative, and he would make sure everything between NXT, between WWE. I mean, I would almost guarantee Paul Heyman would have some sort of NXT invasion. Mm-hmm. Like on some level. I, I think you'd have to have that, and I think they'd go after John Cena right away. And I think that would be a really cool storyline. Uh, I think Heyman has such a good vision and such a good method of branding people. Like that's basically all he's been doing since the end, since he left uh, SmackDown. And by the way, his SmackDown run is still one of the best runs of WWE TV that they've ever had. Like right. if you look SmackDown right. 2002 to 2004, five ish, SmackDown was on point. SmackDown was on point. That's where you had Edge, Eddie Guerrero, Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle, like all those guys. 
because Heyman can recognize talent and he can use a lot. You can he can utilize it effectively while hiding weaknesses. Do you think we would hate the idea of Roman Reigns now if Heyman was running WWE? No, no, no. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. Wheels. I think your internet's recovered. What do you got in mind? Uh, I hope it's recovered. I mm-hmm. swear. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with Steve Austin. Okay, he's good. I mind. think he's okay. He, he's Smart enough to know he's worked many companies and seen the inner workings of all of them to go kind of almost like a Paul Heyman and go, that'll work, that won't work. Especially like the Roman Reigns is. And uh, he knows the attitude Eric won't work in this day and age, but he can tweak it to where you kind of have attitude error, but it won't piss off the sponsors and the investors and everything in WWE. So I think Austin would be a great leader of the company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my only cause, yeah, yeah, I, I see. That. And I think he's, he's, I guess, proven enough business sense to at least get himself out there. So I think it'd be great. Um, so we got a few people on the line now uh, as well. Uh, let's go check in with our friend Eamon, of course, of Inspire Pro, the announcer down there in Texas, as well as my co-host over on the Indie Mayhem Show, where we'll be talking to Colin Delaney here in a little bit. Uh, Eamon, what do you think about the big question? Who would you uh, like to see uh, as a big takeover replacing Vince McMahon right now in WWE? No. Now, when you said that, when when the question was originally posed, I had my idea of how I kind of wanted to go with it, and then you guys sort of like took it one direction. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to go with the way I thought of it. Okay. Um, this person probably wouldn't be great from like a business perspective, mm-hmm. but as like running the shows, kind of being the the final say. Right, and and, and I think that's the thing. We there's a distinction. Like Vince doesn't run financials. Right. He yeah. Is, he's the sh- I, I, he's the showrunner. Right. I mean, he, he's the figurehead yeah. slash showrunner. He just kind of owns everything because he's the guy that's been there. You know. And and this this answer is going to be controversial. Uh, so what? I will take a minute for you guys to go what or be surprised right. or whatever. Let's uh-huh. get ready for this before I explain. Right. Um, my answer would be Vince Russo. <gasps> Oh, wow. Um, oh. I think the biggest problem with WWE TV today is that it is so boring. Mm-hmm. One of the things that whatever you want to say about Russo, you know, his stuff in TNA or in WCW, his run in, in WWF uh, until 99, the one thing that I think people love about the Attitude Era and the one thing that people don't talk a lot about about what was good about the Attitude Era was that every show was different. No, but there's no repeating yourself. There's no Adam Rose and the Bunny having dissension for nine straight months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they don't have anything for them, and they're just filling time. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I just have a question for your, for your selection, Eamon. Mm-hmm. Russo also never had to book eight hours of TV. That's true. And this yeah. would also be in a world where you know they would have some stuff like that narrowed down and he would and but you know, they would he focus. was he was also the guy that single-handedly or along with uh ferrera uh booked at least four hours of tv themselves yeah and i think what because i apparently like documented was one of the issues as to why he left for wcw was because they had just started smackdown right and they wanted him to book more tv with no increase in pay yeah yeah um but yeah, I, 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 this would obviously be in a world where certain things would be narrowed down and stuff like that. But I feel like I wouldn't be falling asleep on Monday nights. Right, right. I, I would be at least interested. Like I would right. be – some of it would be really good and some of it probably would be really bad. But at least it would be interesting. And right. and I want that in WWE – WWE's main product at least so badly right now. Right. And I feel like Vince ben, Russo, that was, was one of his biggest qualities. All right, we also got on the line the man behind our Mayhem Mania that caps off the show usually. Uh, it's Mainstream Matt. Matt Carlins, what do you think of the big question? What's up there, Sork? Hey, everybody. I, I, just, I love all your answers, guys, but you're just not thinking big enough. <laughs> I'm thinking, when I'm trying to think of somebody to seize control of WWE from okay. now into the infinite forever... I need someone who can 
think long term, someone who is a proven long term storyteller, someone who can plan years and years and years in advance. And to find a person like that, frankly, you won't find someone like that working in professional wrestling. So I look outside of the industry oh. and I replace Vince McMahon with perhaps someone, perhaps there is no one more beloved in all the realms of geekdom than this man, indeed, the mastermind of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I would Whoa. hire Kevin Feige to run WWE. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. This man oh, wow. can plan. This I man can weave multiple storylines. This guy can handle small TV projects, big TV projects. Really? This guy can do it all. He can do no wrong. This is the man you want. WWE is no longer a professional wrestling company. Hell, Vince tells you that all the time, and you guys always ignore him. WWE is a universe, and you need a man who can uh -huh. handle the universe. <laughs> oh, wow. Big Kev. Hire him. You like that idea now. Wow. You got to make Hawkeye look strong. <laughs> gotta make Hawkeye look strong. Wow. wow. I'm like, what's he going to do? Is he going to say J.J. Abrams? Is he going to say uh, <laughs> William uh, Shatner? Um. You know, who's the Buffy guy? Um, Josh Whedon. Josh, he's Josh Whedon. You know. Uh, but no, no, I'm with you on that. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm tossing up so many names here, and um, and I, I want to keep it in the industry for for this idea. Um, but now I have so many options. Alex Carr's in the chat room is saying either Justin Lamar or Mike Quackenbush. That could be interesting. Could be interesting. Um, but. Uh, I'm going to have to go finally with, for real, JR, Jim Ross. Ooh, ooh, I don't know about that. You don't know about that? The tampon spots are ruining the business. <laughs> we're going to get, get a lot Sorry, we're going to get a lot of 20 minutes draws. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Um, I mean, is that the feeling you get from his podcast? If you listen to a bunch of that, you know, I mean, he's very critical of the business. His podcast you know. is very cynical. But it is very cynical. But I, I am kind of curious what would happen. He's had the book for a bit in some places, right? Like, did he ever in WCW for a minute or at least? I don't or? think he ever had the book. Never had the book. But I he, think I think he could do he some fun stuff with that. Talent. Right, 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 right. You start to bring in talent. But I don't think he ever was on the booking committee. But I think he's somebody with enough in-depth knowledge of wrestling that he could be a good one for it. Um, secondarily, Mike, if I can do a second pick, if that's okay, guys. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know, Mike. You're you're the you're the roller of the of the I, big question. This I week. will I will allow it, Sora, considering right. you literally can turn off my mic whenever you. That's true. I have a knob <laughs> right here. Um, uh, Mick Foley. I think it would be interesting. Mm. I think it would be interesting. He's a, he's a very creative person, obviously. Um, and to see him kind of, you know, work in that, um, you know, I'm surprised he's not an agent, to be honest. Mm. I don't think he wants. Right, right. I think, I, well, I think, it, I think it's the, you know, he has, I didn't realize he had like more kids just to have more kids. So he has young kids again, you know, I was just like, okay. Anyways, um, with that, let's know what you think of the big question as well. Uh, our prize this week, hashtag is WMS big question and at Mayhem Show. Uh, and you will have a chance to win Vicious Outcast Wrestling's January jackpot featuring uh, TNA's Davey Richards was on that show uh, last month. And I was just actually visited uh, VOW for their uh, February freeze event down in Connellsville. It was a lot of fun. A lot of friends of the show involved with that. Uh, they, got a, they got a great thing going on there. Uh, but this digital download can be yours, and otherwise you can pick it up for $7.99 over on uh, SorgatronMedia.com slash SorPittsburghWrestling.com. A uh, great group down there, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, that we uh, support with digital downloads as well. So go please uh, let us know. Who, do you, who would you like to see take over for Vince McMahon? Hashtag WMS big question. And this week, uh, last week we had the big question and the prize was uh, best of CM Punk in IWC volume one. And we did get a response from bum, 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 EW Planet on the Twitter. It says the problem. Uh, and the question was, uh, would the Royal Rumble reactions uh, be what they were if it wasn't for D Daniel Bryan being in WWE? If we had no D Daniel Bryan, would we have the reactions to Royal Rumble that we've been talking about for the last two years now? With the Royal Rumble. And uh, EW Planet says, The problem with the Rumble uh, would have been worse without Daniel. Got to make Bray look strong somehow. 
Am I right? Uh, so there you <laughs> go. Uh, let us know. And, and like I said, this week, January jackpot. J.B. Richards is the prize. Um, so, Rick, I have a question. Yes. Can LB win this week? LB can win this week because he didn't participate. He can. So, Rick, I have another question. Yes. When you refer to the prize, can you try to say it like Kevin Owens? How's how's he say it? <laughs> I can't even pretend to do it, but so you have that, to do that, a Canadian. That, that French Canadian a, English accent like is super cool. Like, the prize. The yeah. prize. I, I don't know. I'm just adding something. That, that's that's just French. French. I think it's really the prize. The prize. Just pretend you're the mountain. That's Montreal, just right? You got to put the in there. The prize. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I'll cough something up. <laughs> do my Please, if you want to support us, support indie wrestling, go to prowrestlingtees.com slash WMS. And not just us. You can find some great designs by the great Alex Carr's Property of Mayhem. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. But there's also some great okay. stuff, including the Click AO. Check out uh, some Scott Hall stuff from Macho Man, some DDP okay. Yoga, Steve Austin, and also check out stores by independent wrestlers wrestling independently. Guys like DJ Z, that, well, okay, he's on TNA, but let's face it. Other friends. Ahmed Johnson's on this, guys. Come on. Of course he is. Of course he is. Ahmed the Blue Johnson? Meanie. Bobby Heaton is supported on here. Uh, Candice LeRae, I've heard that name before. Travo Guerrero. Guys, you know, Chris Hero. I remember that guy. Christopher Daniels. And like I said, a lot of other friends of the show uh, that we want. Dusted Rhodes, friends of friends of the show. Um, Tugboat. Sure, why not? Gregory <laughs> Iron. Gregory Irons on there. Gregory, I, I, I think I showed this uh, before, but uh, Gregory Iron has a lot of really, really creative shirts on here. Um, a lot of great artwork. Uh, they get they got a good crew of people doing art up there in uh, the Cleveland area. Uh, so, uh, and of course, part of the handicap heroes was Zach Gowan, uh, the one-legged wrestler. Uh, so go check that out. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS to start. So, guys, next on the rundown, if I remember how the new rundown, let's go to a mayhem mail and it's going to actually work in a little bit with talking about impact wrestling dustin's back guys so there goes the time for the rest of the show we'll see if mayhem mania will still happen let's try to rein it in a little bit mike really quickly ahmed johnson's shirts are amazing are they He's somehow co-opted Beast Mode. Oh, no. <laughs> of course he has. <laughs> He's going to get sued. Oh, man. But you two can send in your mayhem. Uh, no, that's not the right one. I can't, I'm not used to these titles yet. I need a producer. Um, mayhem, may, uh, mayhem fan mail. To gra- uh, good, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. So, uh, first, our email. Dear Mayhemers from Dustin, it has finally happened. Mr. Ass Two Faces has been announced to be inducted uh, into the WWE Hall of Fame. He did it for The Rock, and it paid off. Uh, one of my favorite guilty pleasures in wrestling. I am excited to see him wiggle, jiggle, and ripple his way across the stage as he accepts his award. While I am certain his children will accept uh, for him, only one can hope. Uh, for a cameo from Scotty Too Hotty to give him the W O R M worthy of the Hall of Fame ceremony. Uh, I'm excited to see it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think he, I, I mean he's really kind of the third tier guy in the Hall of Fame at this point. Um, but for that, I think it fills out real nice. He's he's got the heritage. He's been around not just as Rikishi, but he is a very uh, uh, entertaining no, and memorable. But they only really whoa 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 I was going to say, they, I, I think Riz has the same point as me, though. They only really talked about Rikishi, though. Mm. Right. Like, the promo video was just Rikishi. They didn't mention, like, his other work. He didn't mention in his part of the Simone Swat team or even the Sultan or, or any of that. Like, it was just Rikishi and okay. him dancing and putting his buttons Nobody in Nobody remembers. Places. Anything to add there, Riz? I mean, the Head Shrinkers. Or the Head Shrinkers, too. Yeah, like. That's the only thing I don't get. It was just the fact that it was just Rikishi's big ass being put into people's well, he's faces. Still, he was still a big entertaining part of the show for several, several years. I think it's it's well-deserved. And and, 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 and maybe they will. Making a difference, hello. And, and this mm-hmm. is just the announcement. When we get our package, our big package about his entire life and everything. <laughs> uh, talking about the drones again? Oh, no, 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 no. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> back to them. He's got questions, guys. We know, how, we know how these go usually. Mm-hmm. I love a good vignette. 
be it the kind to build a character like with Cage last week on Lucha Underground or the kind to build tension in a feud uh, like with Rusev and Cena. They do more to get me invested in storylines that promo that, that promo segments. Uh, what is a recent vignette that got you extremely excited? Sorg, Sorg, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. Mad Sorg. Mike, I think you have something to say. Um, the vignette on SmackDown where Natty went to dinner with Naomi and her husband. That's true. And Tyson sure. Kidd and Cesaro interrupted it and beat him up. It was a very cool vignette. Pushed the storyline, and it's something I did not expect to see on SmackDown. It was really, really good. I think the king of vignettes has been NXT and that staff down there. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, my, my pick would have been uh, Enzo and Cass's like, iPhone. Yep. Oh, like, yes. On- That's on- I, 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 I'm going to uh, third, fourth that, whatever we're at right now for that. Um, no, that that's the best stuff. <laughs> and, and the fact that they're it. just doing that on an iPhone and they're, doing, they're being so creative, uh, I still say that's a calling card. If you're in the indies, if you're an indie wrestler that listens to this show, I doubt you're out there. I don't know. Um Bye. You should take notes. You should watch what they did. Watch the Enzo and Cass promo. Watch how they pointed their iPhone. Watch how they turned their iPhone the right way. And they presented that. And they watched it on a 42-inch screen. And it was as entertaining as as any more so than anything on Raw lately. You know? Um, I mean, there's... You can do so much, guys! Um, another perfect example... Eamon, down at Inspire Pro, you have people down there doing some incredible stuff with promos, like Delilah Doom. Look up, like, mm-hmm. uh, was it Delilah Doom? Let's go to the mall. Yeah, just um, have her at the mall, and then her... Oh, my God, that's... Amazing. And then her at, her at her home, like, doing aerobics to Richard Simmons went to the old... Mm-hmm. Right, right. right. It, was, it was the best stuff, and is a great. she's a great character, and she's, like, barely a year into this stuff. We interviewed her, like, after her second match, like, a year ago. And, mm-hmm. and she's always doing amazing stuff and getting herself out there. Um, I mean, it's, it's all about self-promotion and learning to use the tools right. You know, a you're gonna be a, especially if you're a character. Like, yeah, if you're going to yeah. be a character like Play that, be it. a character. And, yeah, like, and, I, I, and I know we're getting other territory, but if you're an indie wrestler and you give me a promo that's like three minutes long, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Keep it short. Like, you know, know what I sit I there? I especially, about. especially at the live shows, videos so that I, 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 I'm ranting now. I mean, I'm ranting now. Especially videos that you put on a live show. We put one on at one of the, one of the most recent shows where we happen to That's play videos. Exactly I was at another about, one. Sorry. I was at another one where they play videos in front of the crowd, and it's and 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 I the exact moment, which is usually about a minute in, where I'm and I did that for all those little videos we did for IWC. Like I'm counting in my head, not you know, not a count, but like I. Like that p- moment where it's like too long, right there. Should sure. have ended right it's there. It's the same. It's the same feeling that we get when we watch the opening of Raw, and they take twenty. <laughs> no, worse, I'm serious. Worse. And they, they take and they take and they take twenty minutes to say something that they can say in two minutes. But it's difference. Like, this is a difference. Point. Do you, you uh, can do right. that. You can do that and have the audience in the palm of your hand for twenty minutes if you're good. Let's, let's face it, yeah, indie wrestlers. You're, you're not. A, you're so no fucking awesome. Triple H, okay? Um. <laughs> anyways, I'm sorry. I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. It's oh. indie venting time. Okay. Indie venting time. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, does anybody else have any words. comments about vignettes before yes. we move on? Yes. Riz. Four words. Doctor Shelby. Mm, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. The team hell knows that's stuff. Honorable mention um, the Wyatt family Dr. stuff Shelby. is really good too. Wyatt family stuff's really good, right? Right. Matt? Also, uh, vaudevillian vaudevillains versus lucha dragons. Mm-hmm. Oh, any of that stuff that was great with the midgets. Matt, do you have one? In a terrible work. That's the two I was working for. <laughs> okay. We we can't have a discussion about great backstage vignettes without mentioning Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. Yes, because they are doing it better than anybody right That's now. That's like right, the right. selling point. Lucha oh, wait, wait, wait. That, that was that was that was the entire email's premise was underground actually. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I'm hearing you guys talk about a midweek war. It sounds like it's fantastic stuff over there. Wheels, you got anything real quick? Um, everybody basically mentioned everything I like. I agree with all of them. So nice. we yeah. haven't had a lot lately. We really haven't had a lot in, in recent years, other than the stuff we've been talking about. Number two. Let down, I mean lockdown this past week, saw a few interesting spots that I really enjoyed. Specifically, Loki's double stomping the trash can on Gunner. While I think the show suffered by being a two-hour regular themed impact, uh, I am more curious as to, uh, I'm sorry, to what is one of your favorite uh, hardcore spots you've seen in wrestling? 
Wow. Ooh. Okay. Um. Can I share? Uh, we're getting we're getting indie on me. Uh. But the thing I did not expect. Uh. I'm at VOW and there's a uh, scaffolding and they, I've seen them use this before on their on their video. Um. But there's a scaffolding and this match is going on in the ring and it's a Prince. Oh, we'll get into this on the Indie Mayhem show. Uh. Prince of Darkest match, which is basically the uh, blindfold match from WrestleMania with Jake Roberts and the model. Um. But there's a 24/7 roll on their hardcore basically title. Uh, and uh, this other guy, who's aptly named Super Beast, uh, uh, rolls out the scaffolding to the ring through the crowd to climb it and jump on the guy and win the belt. <laughs> I don't know, hardcore, but it was a spectacle, and I witnessed it in person, and it was pretty, wait, wait, pretty tremendous. Sword? Yes. Was it was it a scaffolding or was it the cherry picker? That like. Does it like move up? No, slowly? Yeah, no, 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 no. It's, it, it's, it's a scaffolding. It's a scaffolding up because then they book the scaffolding match for the next show. Which okay. I, I hope they're not okay. doing in that venue because that ceiling is not very high. Um, especially after friend of the, uh, again, Indy, friend of the show, Jock Samson just took a, a header off of a, a scaffolding over the weekend in front of a thousand Ouch. people. So, uh, uh, but best to him. Well, uh, uh, let's bring that up on the on the Indy Mayhem show later. That I am in. Uh, anyways, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, hardcore spot. Who's who wants the next one? Um, I could, all I, right. Oh, go ahead, Mike. Oh no. All right. Um, I love it whenever someone creates a makeshift platform, <laughs> like the table in the corner or something. No, no, no. Like something like a uh, couple like, examples. Like like the triangle ladder match at WrestleMania 2000, where the Hardys made uh, the Edge and Christian made the table at the top of the ladder and unfolded it so they could sit down to grab the belts mm -hmm. or like when Shane McMahon and Kurt Angle had their match and he put a piece of plywood on, draping on the top rope so you could jump off of it like mm -hmm. I just love innovative things like that or even if you just put a table on top of uh, the two steps so it makes it more elevated so you do something mm -hmm. like I love stuff like that because it shows Outside the box thinking, like not just thinking what you have to work with under the ring, but combining stuff like that. I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Riz, then we'll go to Eamon. Um, like the one I was thinking about it was along the same lines as uh, Mike. Uh, I remember watching, I forget which one it was, one of the. Uh, Money in the Bank matches, and they set and Jeff. I think it was Jeff Hardy set up a ladder as a table, <laughs> and then climbed another ladder, and did his Swanton Bomb off the ladder onto Edge. And that's that, actually that, like draft. Whatever, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't really matter. It was just put to the point where it was just carnage. Uh, yeah, I think that's what what I liked mo most about that. All of that, all of the you know, the spots in that match was the fact that they put their bodies on that on the line that much that, that Edge almost looked like he was about to die. Um, and a side note to uh, uh, Jimmy the Snake Roberts from Five Dollar Wrestling, mm -hmm. DDT. A few fans in the ring, so uh, I think you have a video of that somewhere. Uh, but it's it's pretty awesome. All right. I aim in real quick. I was going to say, it was funny because I was going to say the, the one I hate the most, too. And it's actually that spot that was just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, okay, okay. And that, that specific one with Hardy and Edge is really good because Hardy's coming out from like a giant height and it makes sense and it's it's a cool visual because it's the first time they ever did that. Now they really overused it. WWE is constantly doing the ladders that break like tables mm -hmm. and I, I, I think it's bad because I, I, they're just painting up wooden ladders. Ruining it's, the uh, business, man. Yeah, it, it, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I also really love when... Um, People take weapons that would normally like be used to like hit somebody with, and use them for submission moves. Like That's like yeah. yeah, like like with a chair or like with the, like uh, I think well, there was a recent one where not super recent, but it, I think like Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton had like a street fight where it ended with uh, 
Brian putting in the yes lock with like a kendo stick across his face and like it, it, mm-hmm. like like I I feel like that's really like it shows con- like it shows intuition and it shows um, like it makes sense with the with the match I think. Eamon, do you remember when Cena used the the actual turnbuckle for the STF on, on Umaga? Yeah, 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 that's yeah. another good one. Like, uh, there's a lot of really good like utilization of that kind of stuff, and uh, and and nine times out of ten, those are really cool. All right, how about you, Wheels? I'm gonna go a little indie. I'm gonna go with the car hood during <laughs> the A list and. Wild West match, and yes, yes, you don't see that very often in wrestling. Yes. Uh, what, what was the spot, Wheels? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, well, they, oh, okay. Uh, go ahead, Swerve. They, I, they brought a car hood to the ring, or somebody did. Was it a fans bring the weapons or something? Yeah. So yeah, somebody brought a car hood and painted RWA on it, like spray painted real quick the RWA letters on it. Um, <laughs> and they like use it for a DDT or something. Like they use it in the match, hit people with it. You know, they did a couple spots on it, and it was basically just a hard surface kind of landing there in the ring. It was, it was, it was kind of like wow. And it actually to the point where we took the we took a picture of it and and put it up as the RWA logo on the uh, album cover uh, for the DVD, nice. no, the album cover, DVD awesome. cover. So, um, where are you at, Probably. Matt Carlin's? Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, I, I'll just mention this one real quick. Um, I think it was the second week of the uh, Raw Alternative feed. There was an indie match. I think it was out of Toronto. I apologize to the two guys who killed themselves, but I forgot your names, just as my uh, Twitter bio implies. Yes, I did forget your name, indie wrestler. Uh, anyway, they, <laughs> one of them brought a bag of keyboard keys and treated them <laughs> as if they were a bag of thumbtacks, thumb and so they... Choke slammed and power bombed each other onto the pile of keyboard keys, which this in my mind seems hideously painful, like getting like dropped onto a pile of Legos. Nah, um, and then also later, in keeping with the keyboard theme, um, the fella had the the keyboard duct taped to his uh, to his shin like a kick pad, and then was kicking the dude with the keyboard oh, wow. taped to his leg. Uh, and uh, nice. that's good ingenuity. I can't I can't think of the wrestlers you're thinking of that that did it, but I know it's uh, from Smash Wrestling. Of course. Yeah. Yes, it was Smash Wrestling, exactly. Thanks, Amy. That's awesome. I That's awesome. Know. Plug them, plug them. And finally, yep. Bobby, real quick, what, what do you got for, I, for hard? I was going to say the Legos uh, as thumbtacks. Lego uh, Deathmatch is really fun. Um, yeah, any, anytime the white, white Russian leg sweep is used, I love that for some reason. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Okay, there's it's more email. Too. There's more it's email. Great name. So, um,. Oh, good. We got that. Uh, our guest just sent the number for tonight. Um, so, uh, finally, uh, I'm absolutely loving Lucha Underground and NXT at the moment. One of the things that both have a rapid fan base that gets into the show. On recent Lucha Underground, we heard the crowd supporting Son of Havoc and Pentagon Jr., two major card heels. Mid-card heels, I'm sorry. Uh, I question, though, does this counterculture crowd support ever negatively impact a show for you guys? That's all. For, that's it for me, guys. I hope this email finds you all well and all all. To be all in well, well spirits. Uh, I am excited for the year 2015 in pro wrestling because so far we have seen some amazing quality wrestling, and it seems that with all the options out there, I am able to find uh, whatever I'm looking for on a weekly basis. I hope you're all getting the same. Regards, Dustin. So again, that counterculture, the 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 the, the heels being cheered and stuff like that. I think it gets confusing uh, sometimes, especially when. Uh, I've seen in recent months in indies, um, somebody getting booed. So it was like, okay, let's let's turn them heel and see what happens. And then they're inexplicably two shows later getting cheered. You know. Well, uh, one thing about his question, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Pentagon Junior is a face now because Chavo turned on him. Okay. Or is in is he's in the midst of a face turn? Yeah. And, and so I think yeah. It's but one of those but, things but like I feel like, like with up. pro wrestling, especially stuff on TV. Uh, you know, kind of that continuity thing, um, like I talked about on the Mayhem Minute this way this week, or this morning actually, and uh, 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 you know, with the Kevin Feige thing that that my, Matt's talking about. Like, I feel like everybody's back and forth heel face so much already; it doesn't even matter anymore. You know, mm. so as far as eh, it's a response, you know, some people are just gonna have a cheer heels. You know, it's just yeah, it, it just it, happens. It, 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 it takes sort of a real eye to sort of know how to work that and and mm. and. 
you know, roll with the punches, I guess, is the best way to put it. I know Triple H mentioned on the, po- on the Steve Austin podcast. He's like, we, we listen and we change stuff and all that stuff. But, like, um, I, I think, you know, getting heat is a, is a very interesting art. I think it's easier when, when faces get booed. I think that's one thing. Uh, if a heel gets cheered, I think sometimes it's either based off of they think they're really, you know, or there's, you know, they do something that gets a reaction that you wouldn't expect them to get, or um, they are there are people that see that person's work as a heel and appreciate the good work of it as a heel that they don't get caught up in the fact that, you know, they're being a heel and they're getting heat, so you should move them. Um, I, I think that second part. I think people think that's lo- that's a larger portion of that cra- that kind of demographic than than it actually is. I, I think you know there are people that want to boo the bad guys, you know, and 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 when they they get it, they you know they deserve it. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, anybody else have any uh, uh, thoughts on that before we move on? It's also kind of more fun to cheer heels because as a heel you can get away with doing a lot more. Right. Right. Exactly. And you can you can afford to be cool and be kind of a dick at the same time. Like I mean it, like I mean look at Wade Barrett. Mm-hmm. He was getting cheered so much because everyone loved to say, "I'm afraid I've got some bad news." And now he mm-hmm. doesn't say that anymore because you know, he was getting cheered and they wanted to be a heel. Mm-hmm. And, then he's, and he's a character, and I think they see that kind of right. goofiness of the character, him coming in on the giant, you know, podium and, and all that stuff. Like, it's not a character that you would, like, downright boo. You know what I mean? It's not like a Seth Rollins who's, like, dastardly that's, and, and That's and entertaining. To... That, that is an entertaining thing happening in front of me, so I'm going yeah. to react mm-hmm. That I'm the whole point, he's not a heel because he's underhanding. Right. Underhanding. Right. It's because he falls into a certain different variety these days. Yeah. Right. All right. On that note, uh, so let's roll into the. Uh, oh, I hate when they say roll on on TV. Like we'll keep rolling. <laughs> like, on, and then I just freaking did it. Um, roll. Yes, you did. Damn it. Damn it. Let's transition. Roll. Let's transition smartly to our next segment. Which is Mayhem Mania. I got a list there in the chat room, guys, if we can abide by that. Uh, Matt Carl, let's give us a quick rundown for those that may be their first time. And what are we doing this week? Welcome to round four of Mayhem Mania. It's kind of like a competitive thought experiment. We've got eight matches. We're trying to create the best WrestleMania card we possibly can within the realm of reality. So don't bring me any of your TNA losers, all right? So basically, (laughs) sorry, guys. Throwing it down. Um, So we've got eight matches. We have six people lined up. Each of you will get to make one one move. Either you can swap one with another, one for one, in between these matches. You can add someone who's not on the card insert them into one of these matches, make it a three-way, make it something else. Or you could take one of these matches, trade it totally out, bring in a new match with wrestlers who are not on the card currently. Don't worry if you move one of these guys off the card. The next person can bring them right back in. You Mm -hmm. won't hurt anybody's feelings that way. Let me recap the card very quickly and tell everybody where we stand. And then we'll uh, go to Wheels, who's on deck. Everybody ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Brock Lesnar versus Bray Wyatt. Charlotte versus Paige. The I'll Be Special. John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus Triple H. <laughs> wow. Untarnished since round one. The Miz versus Damian Mizdow. Sami Zayn versus Randy Orton. Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan. The Usos versus Team Uppercat Kid and Cesaro. And Great Britain's favorite match, Rusev versus. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Wheels, you're up. You can make one change to the card as it stands right now. Oh, but man. Do I-, I don't know who I'm going to make mad about this, but uh, I'm going to take Zane out of the match with Orton. <laughs> and I'm going to put I'm going to put Adrian Neville in versus God. Orton. Oh. Wow. That's fine. 
Here I come to save the day. <laughs> oh God! RKO <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> Bobby, you're up. Exactly. Where, where does the least so gay hairdresser film Wheels. start? Wheels, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, um, I was gonna, I was gonna take Sami Zayn versus Orton off anyways, so I'm gonna take that off. And the whole gonna, match. The the whole match. Uh, Zayn versus uh, Zayn, uh, oh, Orton course. versus. It's, it's, it's Bobby. I forgot. Adrian Neville. Uh, I'm gonna add. Stardust versus Goldust. Yeah. Don't Aww. call. Don't call him Cody. <laughs> oh man. Damn it! I was gonna take off. Sorry, that. Wills. Hey, Bobby. <laughs> Damn. Oh man. <laughs> I'm between. I'm between two moves. Can I vocalize? Can I at least vocalize what my two ideas are? Sure. Before picking one. I want to switch Lesnar and Hogan to do Lesnar, Rusev, Hogan. And, and I don't really want to do Hogan, Wyatt. Like, that's my problem. I just really want Lesnar, Rusev. <laughs> well, Eamon, there's still... collateral damage never hurt anybody. There are still other people who are going to make moves. So. The other, I know. The other thing is that I really want to make uh, Finn Balor, Bray Wyatt. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Well, let's just get rid of Brock then. We don't need him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's a champion. No, but Eamon, wow. we will put someone will put Brock Lesnar back in. I will. I'm sure. <laughs> I, I, okay, I'm, I'm gonna trust. You know, that's you. what we said when we pulled Sting and. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna there, trust yeah. in you guys, even though Riz is right after me. Uh, so I don't know why. <laughs> um, I'm take off Lesnar and put in Finn Balor. All so right, Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt. <laughs> uh, you're just doing that for the battle of the entrances, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, but also I think it would be really good. All right, now, Eamon, which character would you have Finn Balor come out as? Which le- which letter does the little Toda thing go over? The A or the A? Yeah, it goes over the A. Yeah. Um, Perfect. All right, good job. I'm, God, I... Balor! Who's up? Riz? Yeah. Um... Lots of talent out there. There is. Uh, I hope Riz doesn't do what I want to do. So, here's what I'm going to do. Just for Eamon's sake. Because I was going to do this anyways. Let's have Brock Lesnar Rusev. I was going to get rid of Hogan. Yeah, fuck him. Get rid of fuck him. God damn it. Fuck him. I actually had – I was going to change that match anyways, but this match is a lot better, so thank you, Eamon, for changing it because uh, I was going to make See it See what happens probably... when, we work, when we work together. Is... No, fuck you. <laughs> uh, but I was going to have, like, some weird matchup that nobody would like. <laughs> I do like <laughs> – Oh, God damn it. I took yours, I know. No, you didn't take mine. You took who I was going to use. Because I was going to add Lesnar to the Ziggler and Bryan match. Oh, that would be cute. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, oh, shit. Um, so what? what is the Orton match oh, now? Orton, Orton versus who? Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's just gold versus Orton Stardust. It's gold versus Stardust. Gold Stardust. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Um, damn it. Uh, well, actually, God. Really a good match for that one, too. Jeez. Oh man, I shit. All right, you know what? I am on this card. Who what? Big. Is Seth Rollins on this card? No, not at this moment. All right, I. He's cutting out. You're cutting out. I don't know why. Oh, I'm all right. I'm going to add the team Who? of Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose to the what? tag team match. Oh, really? really? Reformed Shield. Sure. Why the not? Titty Master and the Dick Master. Jesus Almighty. <laughs> because I don't want to take off Stardust vs. Goldust. I don't want to take off Miz vs. Miz now. By so the way, guys, uh, complete side note. Uh, it was announced on Twitter that Dusty Rhodes is going to be on Raw next week. Oh, no. Oh, wait, yeah. wait, what? If you we. I'm so goddamn excited for On that. the mothership! <laughs> I hope he comes out in paint and they call him Sawdust. Uh, so I, oh, no. Matt, can I make it? I've ever gotten to do a turn on this. Man, I would. Suggestion? Hmm. 
to Matt. What's what's up, Eamon? Um, Orton's off the card now. Um, I know that it says Undertaker and Sting. What's your point? I know, but I, I know LB wanted to make that he made the, <laughs> the Reigns match a triple threat match to make it worse. Can we make it worse? Oh, please. You want to make it worse? Worse? Still add. Oh uh, no, no. Let's get some match. We'll add Big Show to make that work. Worse. <laughs> oh. Should we all like come up with a plan? Should we all come up with a plan for Lunchbox like he's here? Hey, hey Matt, what? add AJ to the Divas match. Don't do like, that. So we're gonna have. I'll add someone to the Divas match. So we're like, gonna, wait, wait. We have three, gonna so have. we have three triple threat matches. Yeah. Well, I think I think after Fastlane we should add two matches. That that's me personally. I know Matt made this up. I I'm think gonna have to put that to the Matt. Patreon subscribers. I think so. I can figure out if we can do that. <laughs> All right. WrestleMania is usually. I like love how you're coming matches. down. Well, because yeah. WrestleMania is four yeah. hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who didn't go yet? Matt. Me. Matt. Matt's this Matt. guy right here. I can't. <laughs> I went time. I think that women's match is really solid, Matt. But. Jeez, oh, I have to go with that. What what the hell is this? Really, what? Rollins and Ambrose? I don't mind to just strike that off there right now. This Do is it. pissing me off right Do now. It. You stole my move. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's why he's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> he was just gonna he was gonna try and make his wife happy by putting Ambrose back on the card. <laughs> this is just so left up. <laughs> you, know you, know he... you know what? You know what? I will make it worse because you know what? I don't think this tag team match has enough tag teams in it. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no! I know what don't you're you doing. Tag yeah, team don't do it. Don't, don't you dare put Big Show and Kane in oh, there. Man. And add a fourth tag team. Don't man, do it. You just, you don't just, do it, man. You just drop that to the pre show while you're at it. Get a payday, Matt. You, right. know how to, you know how to pull at my heartstrings. <laughs> All right, Matt. Well, how, well, what does the card look like now? Oh, Looks man. like hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> we have now destroyed it. I'm gonna kill it. Kill it with fire. Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt in the battle of the best entrances. Then it's he just go back and have a match. Charlotte versus Paige. The Dream Divas match that will not happen. John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus Triple H. The Miz versus Damian Mizdow. This is we might as well just like graduate this one. This one gets the foot and stone. <laughs> Gold versus Stardust. Ziggler versus Brian. Rusev versus Brock Lesnar. And a four-way match for the WWE Tag wow. Team Championships <laughs> of the World. The Usos versus Kid and Cesaro versus. Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose versus The Big Show and Kane. The best part is, well, we might as well throw a security in there somewhere. The best part is, minus uh, Rollins and Ambrose, that match very well could happen. <laughs> Instead of Rollins and Ambrose, you'd have the Ascension in there. Pretty well. We're going to figure out a way to book that this week. We're going to figure out a way we can get Rollins and Ambrose into a tag team. I think everybody <laughs> next week should just add a tag team to that match. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I was trying to figure out a way to put James in there. What's really crazy? Wow. On that note, on that note, check out. Uh, it, this will be updated. I, I know, uh, this this, this will be talking about. Oops. This will be updated at mainstream Matt with one t dot com, uh, and you can check out all the previous weeks and and play along. Uh, let us know at Mayhem Show what you think of some of our picks now. So with that, it's time to know what did you learn from wrestling this week, and you guys can actually uh, uh, participate at Mayhem Show on Twitter as well, or hit us up on the hotline and stuff, and and, and let us know before or after the show uh, what you learned. Uh, as well. So, uh, uh, who's going first? How about uh, Eamon? What did you learn from wrestling this oh, week? Oh, God. I was hoping it wasn't me. Uh, Sorg, I'll take that bullet. All I'll right. All right. All right. Sorry. You can take the bullet. Take the bullet, Matt. All right. I learned that I have something in common with Andre the Giant and Arnold Skoland oh. because uh, I read an article on SI.com about uh, Shawn Michaels, and he said that Andre the Giant and Arnold Skoland were known to play cribbage for hours on end before the, uh, the the show started. And I like to play cribbage, too, 
with my grandfather. And hey, next time you guys are over for a pay-per-view party, I'll get out the cribbage board and we'll play cards like a bunch have, of old men. I have How's that sound? Matt, Matt I've, got a, I've got a dirty secret to tell you. What's that? Oh, no. I, I literally played online cribbage yesterday. Oh, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> are you 85? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow, I did, didn't, didn't expect that. Uh, Riz, how about you? What did you learn from wrestling this week? Well, I learned that I forgot how good SmackDown can be. Like, the Thursday, it, when it was on Friday, I barely watched it, and I thought it was junk. Mm-hmm. But when, when I start watching it now for, you know, the midweek war, it's, it's really good. That's what I learned. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Uh, what about you, Eamon? I learned that Wednesday, being tomorrow or whenever you're watching this, uh, it's going to be a day, it's going to be a, or last Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be a day to celebrate because mm-hmm. wrestling's cool again and fun and I'm happy. Good. Until, what about, what until about you, next Wheels? Time when we yell. Oops. Yeah, until Monday. What'd you learn? I learned keep your. Uh, fiance is away from your social media. Damn straight. Or Holy it's going to be the worst running joke of the week. Yep. Yep. The well, longest. Running what joke. about you, Mad Mike? <laughs> Not really. Riz. Damn it, Riz. Uh, well, first, Cars learned that he could be the Mick Foley of WMS. Um, can Yes. Yes, he can. Um, I learned. Uh, a two-part thing. I learned I want to see a lot more of Awesome Kong versus Havoc, even though it's probably not going to happen. I also learned that uh, TNA just needs to stop. Like, they had a whole segment with Brooke and Robbie E that was supposed to be on lockdown, that was being advertised, and they put it online and condensed it in the form of a, uh, like, a, a video package and pretended it happened live. That's a thing that happened. Wow. That's not how you do that. No, that's not how you do that at all. Wow. Also, Mike's not really like describing this entirely. This wasn't just like a segment. Like this wasn't just like a vignette. This was them running an obstacle course. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. Uh, it was it was the amazing race. Kind of question mark. Question yeah. mark? What about you, Bobby? What'd you learn? I learned that when this can goes up, your mouth goes shut. <laughs> According to the Miz. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, and what did I learn? I learned. Uh, I learned. Uh, hey, if you're at the right bar and you just mentioned, yeah, everybody's watching wrestling at home, and I'm missing it right now. The bartender will put it on, put it on the TV for you. Absolutely. That was pretty I know good. That, I know that to be true. So I just not like... if you ask Matt McCarthy in Los, Los Angeles. What? No. Oh. <laughs> he has a whole thing about this. Huh. This Interesting. Podcast. I I think I think I heard that the one episode I watched or listened to of that I think that's what he went off about it recently, right? Yeah, uh, that's a good podcast. Uh, so with that, hey guys, thanks for joining us. Great wrestling mayhem show, uh, and hopefully, I think I think I'll be we'll be back next week. I can't remember how that schedule goes. Sorg, I have the information. You have the I'm, information. I'm willing to give it away for free. Oh, of course, <clears throat> of course. Uh, but of course, you can join us. We're uh, a Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, you can check out all the stuff there, WrestleMayhemShow.com. Uh, all the shows that we do and all the subscription links. Not all of them. And most of them. Most of the subscription links. The ones that matter. Uh, t- check out Total Divas Wrap-Up, the May- uh, WWE Raw Wrap-Up, the Midweek War, or I'm sorry, the Midweek Oh, Indie Mayhem show. We're talking to Colin Delaney tonight, um, and so much more. They're doing they're doing uh, watch parties. Uh, they do the game show. Uh, all kinds of stuff happening over at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com, and so much more. It's such a great lineup. I just posted reposted la- uh, the old uh, interview with Jerry Sags of the Nasty Boys that we did. Oh boy! Check that out on YouTube and WrestlingMamShow.com. I got interviews with Jimmy Snuka, uh, Mike Quackenbush. I got one in the hopper. I'm going to be reposting the one we did with current NXT trainer Sarah Del Rey. I think we talked about her haircut she just had, <laughs> if I recall correctly. So go check that out. And of course, you can drop us a line four one two two zero six WMS zero or email address at good times, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 
Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Everybody in the chat room, live.sorgatronmedia.com, live at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, Alex Cars, Juggalo John, and the crew. And thanks, Mike Allen, at Mike Allen PR, for doing our show notes all night long. Until next time, Mayhem out. Wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.